warn you, it's sexually explicit. Then we'll debate it. This is embarrassing. He began to perform oral sex on me. I was uncomfortable. He, he knew what he was doing, for sure, but it was just, it felt like too much too soon, and I mean, I couldn't exactly rewind at that point. I guess it would have seemed to me to be unattractive for for me to say anything different or anything negative about the experience. He asked for reciprocation. Did you perform oral sex upon him at that time? Yes. Let's bring in our legal panel to debate it. We've heard about one sexual encounter after another, and they're getting more graphic, but is it really necessary for her to go through every single time the defendant, Jody, and the victim had sex in such X-rated detail? So, expert panel, will all this sex talk backfire on the defense, or could it prove the pattern of sexual abuse she hopes will help her prove ultimately battered women syndrome? We'll start with Evangeline Gomez, criminal defense attorney. This testimony is critical for the defense. If they didn't have it, she wouldn't have a case. It showed thus far that she is the dirty little secret. He had numerous women that he was sending text messages to, a married Mormon woman that he was flirting with, a woman at a convention, another woman on the side. This is ridiculous. He made her mind mush. And what the jury needs to understand and what viewers need to understand is that you can't look at someone and tell if that person is a victim of domestic violence. Beautiful women, mediocre looking women, beautiful men can be victims of domestic violence. All and right. that's what people have to understand. Stacey Ottawa, Florida prosecutor. Are you seriously kidding me with that explanation? I mean, really, where is there any evidence that there's any kind of domestic violence? So now we're to assume that any time a woman has dirty names called to her or she doesn't like the kind of sex that's going on and she stays in a relationship, that now she can slit a man's throat, shoot him and stab him 29 times? If you want to believe that this testimony is ridiculous and quite frankly, a prosecutor, and I'm sure at some point they said that this is not relevant. The defense said, well, we have to try to prove something. We have to try to say that she's abused. This testimony means nothing. The prosecutor doesn't right. have to do a long cross-examination at all. Adam Zwickel. Have you ever no. been hurt? Adam. Uh, yes. I'm, I'm here. This, this I, I can't even believe I'm listening to Stacy speak the way she does, given the cases that she's dealt with. Let's talk about what this case is about. This case is about, like everybody else's, life to a typical T. We all have skeletons in our closet. And in this case, the defense has opened up this young, door, this young gentleman's closet, and the bones have come flying out. They're all over the floor, and rightfully so. Because if there's one thing we know about this case, is that this man was controlling, he was sedating, he was abusive to her and there are two types of abuse there's psychological abuse and there's physical abuse and this young lady was psychologically abused it justifies her act All right. and I think and I think oh the defense is gonna, gonna have a very good point here Tanya Acker okay. I think that I, I think that the defense of Jody Arias in this case as uh, some sort of battered, abused, or degraded woman is really offensive uh, to real victims of domestic violence. I mean, the things that she's describing uh, make the victim sound like a jerk. I'm sure he was a jerk. He sounds like a lot of guys that uh, women in America have dated. But to suggest that uh, that conduct would rise to the level, you know, you send a bad valentine, you're not nice to me in public, you call me late at night, you're insensitive sexually, to suggest that that's the sort of conduct that would justify being stabbed 29 times to me is pretty outrageous yeah but what oh, about yeah. the sec what about the religious cloak here i think that is the missing piece of the puzzle we're going to talk to an expert in the mormon religion on the other side of the break but stacy honowitz couldn't that be the missing piece uh, that makes this possibly something that the jury will look at no, I mean, listen, you never can predict what a jury's going to do, but I don't think it has anything to do with it at all. Big deal. He said, I'm a Mormon and I don't have sex. Plenty of guys lie to the women that they're with in order to have sex. That doesn't mean you get to kill them because the man lied to you. There has to be evidence here, and there is no evidence whatsoever that she is being violated, that she is being abused. That's right, what we're, we're seeing. Nothing. We are just getting started with our debate. Calls lining up. We're taking your calls on the other side, and we're going to talk to an expert in imminent danger. Adam Zwickel. Nothing that's abusive.
The sexual abuse, I can't believe I'm sitting here listening to people minimize the sexual abuse, all the things she went through. I think her testimony What'd is absolutely helping her because remember, the defense is going to call experts. Those experts are going to opine that the conduct and the abuse and the control that this man had over her is exactly like that of a battered wife. And like I said before, this is psychological abuse. This is just as powerful of any physical abuse. Well, she and what to sit here and to say, abuse? I mean, this okay, is sexual Stacey, abuse. Going to him. She this kept going abuse. to him. Did you forget that? That's she what a battered wife listen, does, and listen, you know that, Stacey. You was know that. Okay, one at a Adam, time. Stacey, your turn. This was not a cult. She wasn't living under the auspices of Jim Jones or someone had a gun to her head and forced her to have sex. She was in a relationship. He treated her like crap, like a lot of girls get treated. They call their girlfriends. They go, this guy's a you-know-what. I can't stand him. They don't go to the house with a <laughs> shotgun and, and a knife and kill the guy. When you're sexually abused, that's exactly abused, what you, you do. have here. That's what Evangeline, you do. Evangeline Gomez. Thank you, Jane. This woman has a demonstrated history of not being able to get out of relationships with Mr. Juarez. After he threatened to kill her family members and he hit her, they asked Allegedly. her, why did you stay? She, she, she said, I couldn't leave. The same with Travis. She couldn't leave. Listen, how, Jane, how do you honestly, not leave? you get in your car and you drive away. That's how you leave. Has <laughs> been, her mind has been made mush. That is part of being oh a victim God. of domestic oh violence. And oh, as a prosecutor, please. you I should have, know I that. I am a prosecutor. I have plenty of women exactly. that come in my and you office should know that, that are in rela wait a second, that are in relationships that come into my office and they say, wait a second, he forced me to have sex last night. I said, is he your boyfriend? Yes, he is. That's a true person that said I'm abused. She comes to my office and she files a police report. What did this girl do? She kept going Not back and going you back. You and have and those oh, hold on, hold on, everybody. Oh, How, okay, so. So how different is that, though, Stacy, from what she tells, if you can believe her, that she gets baptized, she's under his sway, he's mm -hmm. uh, this s spiritual superior who baptizes her, and then hours later he says, yeah, it's okay to have anal sex, even though we just took a vow of chastity because it's not vaginal sex, and, and, and she claims it was painful. Where do you draw the distinction there between the example that you just used of a woman coming in saying, my boyfriend forced me into sex, and this? and forced me into sex, and there's medical evidence that he forced her or he hit her. This guy, she should have gone to the church and went to the elder and said, I think it's a violation of Mormonism. He okay. told me we're not supposed to have sex. That's not what abuse that's people what it do. Is. One that's not what abuse people do. Not what abuse people do. That's not what an abuse person uh, does uh, that has got the same symptoms as a battered wife. They go back to the relationship. Stacey, you've argued this in your cases. I've watched that's exactly you right. over and over we, again. And now you're flipping the coin Where is the mental Mental abuse and all this. Where do you see any mental abuse? I like the. I didn't like the anal sex this time. Did you hear her say well, that? Well, you're like just saying exactly. Hold on. Okay. All the other I wish times. I had my gavel. Get off. I don't. Oh. Listen, I, I want to bring in this, Patrick this girl Mason was abused. because oh. this is this is she a very very interesting debate. But Patrick Mason, you are an expert in Mormon religion and in religion. The legal team, given uh, her taking the stand for so long. Is the death penalty now unlikely, starting with Tanya Acker? No, I don't think it is. Uh, I, th I think the jury is not going to buy big parts of her story, and, it, and I think there's a big conclusion to be drawn that she killed this guy in cold blood. Stacey Honowitz. I think it's still there. It's premeditated. The story is a bunch of you-know-what, and you know, I think that the death penalty is there and it's deserving. All right, Adam. Absolutely unlikely. Remember, it only takes one juror, one juror only, and there are lots of lesser counts that this jury can compromise on. Evangeline. The prosecutor's case is in shambles. Don't know if he can prove without a reasonable doubt. I think they're going to let her go. All right. Well, wow, what a wide range.